of you guys realize there's a lot of noise in your life? You guys know that there's a lot of noise in your life? Check this out. How many of you guys, you're, you're midway through the week, how many of you feel like you're already behind? Maybe that's why they call it the human race. I don't know. But, uh, and so there's all of that noise. And so trying to focus on God, that's a great challenge. And so, uh, so in, in solving that problem, uh, we get a lot of advice. Some people give advice. Some people get advice. And so there, there's good advice and bad advice. And so uh, let, let me just kind of throw this out there. It's, it's a farmer's advice, just a couple of things. And it just says, uh, keep skunks and bankers at a distance. Life is simpler when you plow around the stump. A bumblebee is considerably faster than a John Deere tractor. Words that soak into your ears are whispered, not yelled. And meanness just don't happen overnight. Okay, so good advice, right? So now we can get good advice or, or bad advice. We can give good advice. And so, so good advice will help you. Bad advice will hurt you, right? Isn't that true? I'm just curious. Anybody ever got what you thought was good advice and then you found out it was bad advice? Right, you know, and so so it happens to all of us. So now, so now, what it is is that rather than than than, than uh, getting somebody's advice, it's better if if we uh, instead of somebody's opinion that we get God's revealed truth. Everybody say truth. Matter of fact, it says this in, in Proverbs chapter thirteen, verse twenty. We use this verse a lot because it works. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. He walks with the wise, grows wiser, and a companion of fools suffers harm. Here, 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 here's Dave's version. If you heed the advice of wise people, you may possibly make wiser decisions. Possibly. If you heed the advice of foolish people, I'm pretty sure it's going to hurt you. Right? Here, here's what I find. I think this is, this, is, this is perfect. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15 said, Fools are headstrong and do what they like. Wise people take advice. Okay, so, so, so anyway, most of us get that. So, so maybe the question should be, what is good advice, or where do you get good advice? Now, if I say that, some of you say, well, well you talk to somebody with, with experience. Experience doesn't always make you wise. Sometimes you can have one year of experience ten times. You see what I'm saying? And, and so, so, so here's what, so what, what we really need is we need revealed truth for wisdom. And John chapter, chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus said, said it this way, that you will know the truth, and the truth is what will set you free. Okay, just setting that up. Okay, so now, anyway, the, is, what seems kind of funny to me is people that, uh, that take, uh, like, some, some parts of the Scripture or the Old Testament, they say, well, well that, that was then, this is now, or, or we're in a new age, or this is a different culture. Check this out. I'm pretty sure thou shalt not kill still works. Maybe not with parenting all the time, but I think it still works. People say, well, you know, if there's nothing wrong with it. It's legal. You ever heard that one? Right? Did you know that prostitution is legal in Nevada? We don't want our daughter calling and say, hey, Dad, I got a job. <laughs> See, it doesn't make it right. So, so we, need, we need a higher truth, right? So, you know, so we, we can share our opinion all day long. That's good stuff for Oprah. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about revealed truth, okay? And so oftentimes people say they're, 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 they're looking for advice, but in reality what they want is for you to approve of what they've already decided. Or people say that they want advice maybe from some kind of a spiritual leader or whatever. They're, what they basically want is permission. Can, can I do what it is I've already decided I want to do, right? So, and I see, that's what makes Proverbs 12, 15 so important. Okay, so, so to move forward in this, that, that messed up perspective, here's what 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 tells us. It says, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. So as we're moving forward, now, now here, here's, I think, what's important about everything that I'm sure I want to share with you tonight. When we have all of this noise, not all of that, it might not be bad stuff, but it's, it's, it's not all helpful stuff, right? Check this out. I brought something with me. You know what that is? It's really small. I don't even know if you can zoom in on that. This, this is, it's, it's, you would call it a volume control. You know volume control? You got one, you, you, know, you have one of these in your car, because I've I seen you at the stoplight. You got it like on about eight, and you're like. 
You lie to yourself and tell yourself that you can sing. <laughs> but you, you, know, you know what the technical term for this is? It's a potentiometer. Yeah, but Don Earl told you, you didn't know that. <laughs> Trying to sound smart. <laughs> it's a potentiometer. So what it is is that there is a lot of sound that gets to this, but depending on where you set it determines the volume that gets through this. So in us, in our lives, we are that potentiometer. There's, there's a lot of God's volume that gets to us. But sometimes because of all the other stuff, we're, we're, we, we don't turn that stuff down, then we, we don't realize that the potential of that volume, right? Okay, so with, with that in mind, is it harmful, is it helpful? Uh, Adam and Eve discovered this truth in the Garden of Eden, right? We, we, we know the story, right? So, and that severely damaged their relationship when they made the wrong choice. And so it's because they heeded bad advice. Here's the bad advice. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. And it said, then the serpent said to the woman, and don't worry, we're not going to get into all of that. that Thank you. See, I didn't even need all that. Just. <laughs> but uh, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, so the, the, uh, the bad advice is it won't hurt you, it will empower you. The, the bad advice is that you take care of your appetite first, your stuff, I mean, you've got to do what's best for you, right? So you do what you want. And so, so here's the fallout of that, Genesis chapter 3, verse, verse 6. I'm, I'm going to read through a few verses, so just kind of hang with me. It says, so when the, the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate stupid dude then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and they made themselves coverings and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden then the Lord called to Adam and said where are you so he said I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself and he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? Okay, a couple of things I want to point out just real quick is, is, is number one, do you think God did not know where they were? Really? You think God's like, hmm, where did they go? I mean, really, think about it. They've got to be around. I saw two naked people a little while ago. I don't know where they went. Do you think God didn't know what they had done? Shh, don't tell God. He'll never find out. <laughs> right? See, so here's the thing. When we're confronted in our spirit with a situation, it's not to catch you. It's to cure you. It's not to hurt you. It's to help you. You see what I'm talking about? And so, so, but in, in, instead, they, they, they got bad advice. They acted on the bad advice. Things went really, really south. They tried to cover their decision and hide its effects, right? And that's how we tend to respond to things that go wrong. Think, and, and we get really defensive. Or, or we cover it up or avoid it altogether. So, so thank God for his grace. Now, we would, we would assume, just like Adam and Eve, when we mess up, we think God's going to be mad at us because we blew it. Truth is, you're mad at you because you blew it. Right? I mean, how many of you guys have ever made a mistake and, and, and somebody points it out and you go, whoa, I didn't know that. You know, I was like, whoa, hey, you got a girlfriend on the side. That's a mistake. I didn't know I had a girlfriend on the side. I mean, that's never a surprise. See, we know. But see, here's the thing. See, see, see. When, when God confronts us, the assumption is that, that he's going to reject us. But actually, God wants to, to reconcile us to right relationship. Okay? So, and, and what God knows that maybe we haven't figured out, we've been duped into believing lies. Because we've fallen for that. And what that means is, back to Genesis chapter 3, God asks Adam this question. Who told you that? Where did you get that information? What, what truth are you relying on? 
See, sometimes we get bad advice from other people. Sometimes we give ourselves bad advice. You ever give yourself bad advice? Yeah. I got this. <laughs> right? How heavy can that be? Right, Earl? You know. You get what I'm saying? So, so, so see, but it's when the truth goes against the grain, it seems unreasonable. And that's when temptation sounds reasonable because it doesn't really ask for anything. Now, now when Jesus faced temptation, we're, we're going to get to this. Uh, when Jesus faced temptation, this, this, all this bad advice at the same time. So we, after fasting 40 days, he was tempted to turn stones into bread. He was tempted to jump from a high place so that the angels could rescue him. And he was tempted to worship Satan so he could rule the world. Turn stones into bread because he's hungry. Jump from a high place so angels could rescue him. And worship Satan so he could rule the world. Sounds ridiculous to me. Sounds ridiculous. I'm really confident I will never in my life ever be tempted to turn stones into bread. I will never look at a rock and think, I could eat that. Never going to happen. I'm a smart guy. I am not going to jump from something high and expect angels to catch me. I might meet some later. <laughs> but they won't catch me. I am highly confident that if I bow down and worship the devil, I will not become ruler of the world. Okay? Probably not going to happen. See, so, so I've never been tempted to stones, stones into bread, but I have been tempted to use my influence, my, 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 my selfish desires to be able to manipulate circumstances to achieve what I want. I have been tempted for that. I've, I've never been tempted to throw myself from a high place so angels could, could, could come and rescue me. But I have been tempted to take foolish risk thinking that it's not going to hurt anybody and somebody always gets hurt. I've never been tempted to worship the devil so that I can rule the world. But I have been tempted to take shortcuts because I don't want to have to go through the process. Anybody relate to what I'm talking about? Now, now here's why this is important. See, those temptations turn God's volume down. Okay, you, you follow me? Those temptations turn God's volume. See, see, and, and see, what makes this crazy is every one of these temptations was in the realm of possibility for Jesus. He actually could have turned stones into bread. He could have. Um, if, he, he, if he fed 5,000 people with, with, with five loaves and two fish, he could have pulled that one off. He could have done that. He was perfectly able to call a legion of angels to catch him or do anything that he wanted them to do. And of course, we know that he's coming back and he's going to rule the world. So all of this was in the realm of possibility. Absolutely uh, could happen. Okay. Now, now for us, like I said, it's, it's not turning stones into bread. It's, it's convinced that it's okay to manipulate the circumstances. We're convinced that it's okay. It's, so it's not us throwing ourselves off of some high place, but we tell ourselves it's okay, even necessary at times, to take risks that hurt other people. It, for, for us, it's not ruling, ruling the, uh, the, the kingdoms of this world, but for us, we think we can justify taking shortcuts because we don't have the time or the resources to make it work. And here's what I'm saying. When we fall for these temptations and we tell ourselves that it's okay to take the shortcuts, it's, it's, it's okay to manipulate, it's okay like that, what happens is we, we turn God's volume down. It, it, you get what I'm talking about? And then, we, then we're, we're wandering around trying to get God's direction. Okay, so, so, so somewhere we, we, we've gotten that bad advice. So, so when we fall for that bad advice, when we don't like what God has said, it turns God, God's volume down. And, and then what happens is we don't hear his voice very clearly. Okay, so now we, I'm going to fast forward this and get, get on moving on this. It's in 1 Kings chapter 19. There's, there's this story. And let me, let me kind of unwrap this a little bit. Elijah is this prophet, and uh, everything seems to be going south. Anybody ever have a week where everything seems to be going wrong? I mean, matter of fact, his complaint was, I feel like I'm the only one. Anybody ever felt like you're the only one? Okay. How many moms have looked around the house and it's completely trapped and you think, I'm the only one? <laughs> right, you know what I'm talking about? How many guys have drugged themselves out early, early in the morning, wore out and tired and think, I'm the only one, right? <laughs> Come on, you, you guys understand? So, 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 so he, he feels like he's fighting for everything. So they have this like, like super spiritual showdown. They meet on Mount Carmel. There's, there's 450 uh, uh, demonic prophets and they have this showdown, so, so he tells them to call fire from the sacrifice. I'm going to kind of short-circuit this whole thing. And then Elijah has this incredible day where Elijah looks up to God, and he asks God to do something. God 
she was fire from heaven. That would be cool. That, that, to be able to pull that off, I don't know, how, know about you, but I think that would be cool. I mean, how, how many of you guys, you're like, you know, you're, you're, you're sitting around outside by the barbecue. And they say, where's the, car- where's the charcoal? You go, watch this. <laughs> I don't think that's wrong to do that, but I mean, that, that's crazy. So, so he calls fire down from heaven. Goes through, so then he, he kills all the prophets. Then he gets threatened by Jezebel. Everybody say Jezebel. Jezebel. You've been wanting to say that your whole life, huh? <laughs> now, now her, her name is Jezebel. We don't know anything about her other than that she was just a mean woman. That's all we know, okay? And so she threatens his life. This great man of faith and power that just called fire down from heaven, now he runs away because he's afraid. I don't, I don't understand. But see, sometimes your greatest battle is, is right after your greatest victory. Remember that. You might want to write that down. Okay? And so, so he runs away, and so God's taking care of him and encouraging him a little bit. And so, uh, so after, after God takes care of him and the brook dries up and he, he leaves that place, then he runs to a cave. And while he's hiding in this cave, and I want you to get this, while he's hiding in this cave, he, uh, God, God speaks to him, and he does this whole long discourse of, I'm the only one, and, and they've done all this kind of stuff, and you know how those people are, and you know, God, uh, I don't like him either. You know, this, this whole long story. And after that long story, God asks him a question. What are you doing here? Let, let me ask you, how, how did you get the state of mind, whatever it is, the depression, the anger, the frustration, how, how did you get here? And then, then some really phenomenal things happen, and I want to kind of point this out to you. So, so he, he, Elijah, he's as a great effect. How many of you guys have ever expected God to do something huge and just rescue you? Come on, you know, you know God, if he would just, seriously, if God would like kill two, I mean, think about it. Think about it. At the place you work, what if God killed two? And you could pick them. <laughs> you know I'm just fun in you, right? You know I'm just fun. Some of you are like, oh my God, Pastor, I mean, but really, so, 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 he, he, so he's wanting God to do something really big. So what happens? Watch this. So, so there's this huge wind. The wind blows so hard, it actually splits rocks in two. Makes the hurricane that just happened like, like nothing. Splits rocks in two. Then, then after that, there's a huge earthquake, and it just shakes everything down. And after that, there's fire. You know, he's familiar with fire. <sighs> this crazy fire. Then after all of that, just a whisper. So let me unpack this idea just a little bit as we, we kind of wind this down. See, sometimes we wish he would do something that blows us away. Isn't that right? I mean, aren't, aren't, aren't there times when you think, you know, God, if you would just like, like just, just something crazy huge. Then I would know. Anybody, do, anybody know what I'm talking about? God, if you would just do something like, like, then I would know. So, okay, that's God. That's God. If God would just do something, he just blows us away. But what if he only whispers? See, sometimes we expect God to do something that absolutely shakes our world. But you just shake it all down. But what if he just does something that just barely touches our ears? And honestly, sometimes we're looking for that holy fire to ignite something and empower us on the inside. But what if it's just a gentle whisper to remind us of who he already is? And here's the thing, and I I just want to kind of write this or, or wind this on up right here. Remember what this is? Hey, Don, what is this? You already forgot, didn't you? It's a potentiometer. Not, not, everybody say it. Say potentiometer. potentiometer. See, here's what we want to happen. Let, let me wrap this up. Here's what we want to happen. We want God to turn his volume up so we can hear him. So God only whispered, God, that's not loud enough. I need more. So we're trying to turn God's volume up. And God is saying... I would rather you turn all the other volume down. See, friends, God's not silent. God's not even whispering. God's speaking. 
because God loves you. It says in John chapter 10, verse 3, and I, I said this Sunday, he said he calls you by name. And we're wanting him to call us louder. See, look, that's, that's the wrong solution, my friends. Turn all the other stuff down. Turn your freaking out down. Are you hearing me? Some of you guys, you're freaking out. Matter of fact, you can't even explain something without a shrill in your voice. Calm down, dude. Turn down your worry. Turn down your fear. Turn down your frustration. You don't need to turn God up. Totally unnecessary. Here's something really wild about this story that I read you from, about Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 17 through 19. When he had him by that brook and he was giving him water and the ravens were feeding him. Ravens were feeding this guy. Anybody know what a raven is? A big old blackbird? Did you know that they don't share? No, they don't share. This actually happened out here a few years ago. There was a, there was a cat waiting over top of a gopher hole. You ever see a cat wait over a gopher hole? You know. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> and the cat got the gopher. Like, way to go, Tabby. So the cat proudly has the, has the gopher. And, it, and I don't know if this is how it works in the cat world or whatever, but it backed away from the gopher hole just a little bit, and it's, and it's standing there, and it's like lion like stance with this gopher gra graping out of its uh, mouth. And it's like feeling pretty proud. And a raven swoops down. Yeah. Torments poor Tabby and steals his gopher. So why shot? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, just... <laughs> but God had him by that brook. The ravens were feeding him. And here's what God said. God said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. Listen, God will get you to a place where he's going to take care of you. He will feed you. He will nourish you. He will refresh you. He will get you built back up in your time. See, this, this man was weary from the battle, weary from being chased. And God said, you know what? I'm going to build that man back up. I'm going to take care of that man. I'm going to help you get back on your feet. I'm going to help you get strong again. Arise and eat because the journey that you're, I'm going to send you on is too great. And after Elijah arose and ate the food that, God, that the ravens were bringing him, the journey that he took was the wrong way. He ran away from the battle instead of to the battle. He went to the cave that he was hiding in instead of the city that he was called to. And that's why God asked that question. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Could I get you to bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment, please? Listen. I know you have really, really full, busy lives. I know that your to-do list is pages and pages and pages of a lot of things. And I know that God will take you to a place to refresh your spirit, to restore your soul. establish your strength instead of 
God, why aren't you speaking louder? I think the better question is, God, help me turn down the volume of everything else. I know that there's things you have to do. I know that. I know that people depend on you. See, sometimes when we're in the heat of the battle, we feel exhausted. And we feel like we don't have many other choices except to, to maybe hide or run away. If you're exhausted from the battle that you're in, show me your hands. Say, Pastor Dave, that's me. I'm just tired. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Keep raising your hand. You say, I'm just tired. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm just tired. Thank you. There's people in this room say, you know what? We're, what? I just feel like we're fighting all the time. All the time, and it's exhausting. Show me your hand. Say, that's me. That's where we're at. Thank you. People in this room, you're, you're fighting tooth and nail to try to get ahead, and you feel like you're, you're, you're not getting anywhere at all, and you're exhausted. How much longer does it have to be like this? Show me your hand. Show me your hand. Come on. Could y'all stand tonight, please? Friends, honestly, it's, it's rarely the big stuff. Rarely. I've seen God do some pretty cool stuff. And I've seen God do a whole bunch of just average stuff. I saw a little girl who was born deaf at the age of 15 years old. God gave her hearing just like that. Blew me away. But you know what I see more often? A mom struggling to keep it together. And God shows up and strengthens her for one more day. I see men feel like they're living in a thankless world get up in the morning and crack open their Bible and they see a scripture that gives them the strength say, you know what, I'm going to do it again just one more day. Right. See, my friends, that's the whisper. That's where God whispers into your soul and say, you know what, you got this, man. Partner with me. Watch what I can do. Let's turn the volume down on all this stuff that you think you can't do and let the volume of God shine bright and loud as possibly it can be. So here's what we want to do today. If you're looking for a big miracle, I'm not talking to you. If I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. But if you're looking for the strength to get you one more day, one more week, one more month, if that's what you're looking for, I want you to step out of your seat and join us at the front right now. Just one more day. Just one more day. You know what we see here today? We see the tired but not the defeated. We see the exhausted but not the done. Just one more day. Just one more day. Just one more day. One more day. Okay, just, just one more day. So what, what happens after the strength for one more day? You pray the same prayer. God, give me the strength for one more day. 
on a Friday morning, you get up and you say, God, give me the strength for one more day. On Saturday, you say, thank God for the weekend, but give me the strength for one more day. You see what I'm saying? See, my friends, that is more miraculous than anything you've ever wished for. The strength for one more day. Here's what's important about this, this, this thought right here. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I absolutely know who holds tomorrow. And I know the promise in the book that I hold on to. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, I might not see the victory today, so God give me strength for one more day. I might not see the victory tomorrow, so God give me strength for one more day. And one of these days, you know, I'm going to see that the miracle shows up on my house because I've been praying for strength for one more day. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you're still a miracle worker. I thank you, God, that you still heal the sick. I thank you, God, that you still rescue those that are bound. But God, more than anything, God, I thank you that you are the one that gives us strength for every day, God. You are our life, God, our breath, God, the blood that throws through our veins, God. You are the answer to every prayer, God. So for today, God, give us strength, God, for one more day, God. Give us, God, the hope for one more day. God, be that, that, that answer to the prayer, God, so we can be strong every single day. So Lord, that's what we're praying. Do it again, God. Do it again and again and again and again and again, God, because we are your children in the name of Jesus. Do that. Hallelujah. Come on, do it again. Yes. My God. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Oh, yes, Lord. for strength for one more day, friends. That's why you pray that way. I want you to start telling yourself that your miracle is on the way. Start telling yourself your miracle is on the way. You, you don't have to earn it. You don't have to be good enough for it. Man, what a relief. In 
simply because God loves you and he wants the best for you. So maybe go out of here singing that song. He'll do it again. You think he'll do it again? Come on, Pastor Robert.